the Honorable Member for Edmonton Strathcona. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on November 28, 2003, I raised a concern with the government that despite only 9% of Alberta children are Aboriginal, since 1999, Aboriginal children account for a staggering 75% of children dying in care in my province. Similarly, high rates are reported for maltreatment of Aboriginal children, including in welfare systems in Saskatchewan and Manitoba. Increasingly higher rates of child deaths are occurring in First Nation-run agencies. Among the reasons given for this rate is that these federally funded agencies receive substantially less money than provincial agencies and consequently struggle to deliver adequate child protection services. An Alberta judge has recommended that Alberta request the federal government to end this disparity. A complaint was filed with the Canadian Human Rights Tribunal on the issue of lack of comparable services provided for Aboriginal children. Sadly, the process of this complaint has been fraught with delays and obstructions. The federal government spent $3 million opposing requests to provide information to the Canadian Human Rights Tribunal to assist it in its examination of a complaint that Aboriginal families and children are being denied comparable family services. The courts eventually ordered release of the documents to the tribunal. The monies wasted, Mr. Speaker, in fighting this review alone could have supported a number of First Nation family service centres. On any given day, 30,000 Aboriginal children are placed in foster care. It has been pointed out that sadly, more Aboriginal children are being removed from their families now than during the time of the residential schools. In 2008, the Federal Auditor General called upon the federal government to work with the provinces, territories and First Nations to resolve these inequities to ensure the services essential to Aboriginal children are provided. The Conference Board of Canada this week called on the federal government to make addressing this inequity a priority and lead strategic action, saying the issue is not new and progress is slow. Mr. Speaker, for the sake of the children, will this government finally end its battle with the very individuals and organizations attempting to resolve this inequity, and will it finally grant the money needed to provide comparable care? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Aboriginal Affairs and Development. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to address the question from the Honourable Member for Edmonton Strathcona. The health, safety and well-being of all children, including First Nation children, is a priority for our government. The loss of a child is very tragic in any circumstances and is even more alarming when a child has died, died while in protective care. That is why we'll take the ongoing and coordinated efforts of governments at all levels, as well as First Nations governments, to make long-term progress. That's why since 2006, we've introduced a prevention-based approach to delivering child and family services on reserve. We've increased our investments through the Family Violence Prevention Program by 38%, and we have passed the Family Homes on Reserves and Matrimonial Interest or Rights Act. Mr. Speaker, child welfare is an area of provincial and territorial jurisdiction whereby the provinces and territories have legislative authority over all child welfare and protection activities. Over the past 20 years, provincial and territorial welfare authorities have delegated program delivery on reserve to a growing number of First Nation child and family services agencies. Currently, there are over 100 First Nations with this authority. Aboriginal Affairs and Northern Development Canada does not deliver child and family services. All children are protected by provincial or territorial child welfare legislation. Mr. Speaker, our government provides $627 million in funding to support First Nation service providers and provinces and territories to deliver services to families on reserve in accordance with provincial and territorial laws and standards. We know the numbers of Aboriginal children in care across the country are very high. The latest figures are around 40,000. Over 9,000 of those children are First Nations living on reserve with funding provided under the First Nations Child and Family Services Program. This means that over 30,000 children are receiving services directly from the provincial and territorial governments. Any and all solutions must be undertaken jointly with provincial and territorial governments as well as First Nations. Mr. Speaker, our government began the reform to an enhanced prevention-focused approach 
for First Nation Child and Family Services in Alberta in 2007. Our government announced an additional investment of $98.1 million over five years and ongoing for First Nation agencies in Alberta. Early indications from across the country show an increase in families accessing prevention-focused services, a rise in permanent placements of children, and an increase in the use of kinship care. Mr. Speaker, we will continue to work with willing partners to implement the enhanced prevention-focused approach to improve outcomes for First Nation children and their families. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The uh, Honourable Member for Edmonton Strathcona. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this year the University of Alberta, my alma mater, is awarding its Community Scholar Award to Dr. Cindy Blackstock in recognition of her long-standing work with communities, organizations and governments to ensure culturally appropriate and equitable services for First Nations children in child welfare, health care and education. Is it not time that this government stop wasting taxpayer dollars opposing efforts to ensure the extension of comparable social and educational services to Aboriginal children as our country has committed to deliver under the Convention on the Rights of the Child? Is it not time to finally recognize the dedicated and constructive efforts by Dr. Blackstock and the First Nations Child and Family Caring Society on behalf of Aboriginal children to respect their experience and advice and to start implementing the programs all and sundry have endorsed? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Our government is actively working to improve the life conditions of First Nations children on reserve. Funding under the First Nations Child and Family Services Program is provided according to several funding models across the country. Each model provides for the delivery of protection and prevention services to improve the safety and well-being of First Nation children on reserve. That's why we continue to work with willing partners to develop and implement the enhanced prevention-focused approach. Mr. Speaker, the current level of funding for First Nation Child and Family Services demonstrates that First Nations families and children on reserve are a priority for this government. We continue to work in partnership with provinces, territories and First Nations to improve outcomes for First Nation children and their families on reserve. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.